I'm honored for having the opportunity to speak to young people today. I want to speak about civil rights and the history of civil rights in this country. And uh, from my perspective, my political views, I, I lean towards the Republican Party because of their principles. And looking at the beginning of civil rights within the United States, first and foremost, to, be, uh, to have civil rights, you had to be a citizen. And we look at a, a landmark case that occurred in 1856. It was called the S Scott versus Stanford case. And it was uh, decided in 1857 by Chief Justice Roger B. Tanner, who stated at the time it was a case in, in relation to Scott, who was a, a African, someone of African descent, who was a slave that his uh, slave owner had taken him across the Mason-Dixie line. And the slave owner died. And he was across the Mason-Dixie line in the northern portions of, of this United States. And since he said, I'm in free land now, I'm staying here because I'm free. But it went all the way to the Supreme Court in 1857. Chief Justice Roger B. Tanning, who happened to be a Democrat, he stated that blacks had no rights that any whites were bound to respect. And that was the law of the land in this country. Then we go to 1886, the Plessy versus Ferguson case that, that came forth, stating that separate but equal was the law of the land. As a matter of fact, here in this country from 1886 to 1896, and prior to that, all the way into the Civil Rights Act of 1964, blacks had no political rights in this country. Quiet in here now, very quiet. So I'm going to let you know what happened. Plessy versus Ferguson said it was separate but equal. And if we look at segregation, a lot of you young folks, you have no idea what it is because unless you experience it. I, I grew up in the South in Texas, and I knew what segregation was. I saw it. I was a child in the early 60s, and I remember even to the point when my, my mother grabbed me one day in, in, in a public park in downtown Houston. I'm five years old and on a swing and was just thirsty and wanted something to drink. I went to the water fountain and my mother grabbed me and said, baby, you can't drink. I said, but mama, I'm thirsty. She said, no, baby, you can't drink here right now because it's not the water fountain. No, baby, just you can't drink. I didn't understand it. But I know now. We look at what was going on from then until 1954. 1954 was the Brown versus the Board of Education of Topeka, where education in this country was segregated. 18, 1954, Brown versus Board of Topeka education. This Civil Rights Act that came forth. It was justice. He wasn't a justice at the time. He was an attorney for the NAACP. His name was Thurgood Marshall. And some uh, psychologists that went around the South with, and the North with them, and they were doing experiments with children to see with a black doll and a white doll. And they were basically coming to black children and seeing what was their view. And most of the black children said the white doll was pretty, the black doll was ugly. The white doll is good, the black doll is evil. And they came up with, from this study and found out that there was a need for desegregation in this country. And it happened in 1954. So from 1954 all the way until 1957, under a Republican president named w, uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, he signed the Civil Rights Act of 1957, stating that blacks, or people of African descent, had the opportunity to vote in this country. I'm going to back it up. 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment of the Constitution were ratified by the Republican Party that gave Af people of African descent the opportunity to become citizens in this nation. Because you cannot have civil rights if you're not a citizen. Blacks were considered chattel. They were considered uh, livestock, not even human beings. So I had to bring this to you to let you know it was all the way from then until 1964 by the pressure that was put on Lyndon Bain Johnson after the assassination of John F. Kennedy in 1963. In 1964, what was going on in the United States with the Civil Rights Movement and what was happening with Dr. Martin Luther King, LBJ, Lyndon Bain Johnson, a, a Democrat from Texas, 
signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964, giving people of African descent the opportunity to vote in this country. So what I'm saying to you today, we see these things that are happening, and we still see that there's information that's up right now where they're questioning this voting rights. Because voting rights is a privilege. If you're 18 years old, don't waste out on your voting rights. Don't mess your voting opportunities up. It's so important for you to cast your ballot, to make a state. I know people love each other. There's nothing wrong with people loving one another. But for marriage to be stating that, that people of the same sex, I've been called a bigot for saying that. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a preacher. I just believe that marriage was ordained by God. Amen. Marriage was ordained by God. And it's absolutely impossible to keep livelihood, to keep life in existence without marriage between a man and a woman. I know in 2010 I ran for the Iowa House of Representatives, House District 66, against uh, a famous name, an icon in the community, Akel Abdul Samad, and, and being a preacher for over 16 years, coming up from a, a conservative background with my father being a preacher, my mother being a politician, I just couldn't help it. They asked me what was my view on, on, on same-sex marriage. And I said, well, I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. I don't mean to offend anybody. I, you asked me my view, and I just stated it. So because I made that comment, organizations that are on the far left, the liberal groups really just came and attacked me because I just stated what I believe. What do you think about Abortion. Well, I believe people should come into this world if they came in. To be conceived is, is a divine act. And I believe that children should come into this world, not to kill them in the womb. Uh, what do you believe about the family? I believe that families should be close-knit. I believe families should be together. And from making those comments, I was a registered Democrat for 38 years of my life. I'm 53 now. And for being a registered Democrat for 38 years of my life, when I made those comments, the Polk County Democratic Party threw me under the bus and said I was an undercover Republican. They stated that I was a wolf in sheep's clothing. Well, from a, you talking to a preacher. Right? Yes. <laughs> they're, they're believing. I know more about this pro gay marriage, and they do appreciate the gay people coming in. Yeah. I'm, okay, so from what I'm saying is basically, from my perspective, in my view, I'm not, I'm not saying that there should be no union between them. I can understand and, uh, and agree with a civil union. But from a biblical standpoint, uh, God didn't make Adam and Steve. He made Adam and Eve. <laughs> you miss, but looking at civil rights and humanity, uh, I stated earlier, it's nothing wrong for people to love one another. Okay, but absolutely. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not speaking hatred to anyone uh, or any animosity towards anyone. But in the, in the fact of dealing with biology 101, developmental biology, women with another woman cannot create a child, and man with another man cannot create a child. And, 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 and okay, can, I, can I complete? I, I'll let you talk. I know I'm, I'm here, but, but I'll, as I stated, man and men cannot create a child, and a woman and a woman cannot create a child. But if that's somebody's lifestyle, so be it. So be it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, thank you.